have to swipe key. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All three engines up and burning. 2, 1, 0, and lift off. Coach on Fire Radio. Fire the Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in this beautiful world. And a very warm welcome to my radio show, Let's Talk Relationships and Life. And it really is wonderful to have you with us today, and I'm so excited to introduce my guest in a moment. But first, I just wanted to take a minute to talk to you about what you can expect to learn and how you're going to feel really inspired by the shows which are aired every other Saturday. And my name is Louise Armstrong, and I really am a healer of hearts, and my real passion is emotional healing. Well, my passion and drive in life is all about relationships, and this really stems from my own personal transformation. And now I'm hugely motivated to take my relationship business to a completely new level online. And I believe that all of us really crave to be emotionally loved. And that might be on a romantic level, personal, or through friendships. And if we're really unable to make that connection, it's because we are emotionally wounded ourselves. And so self-love really is that first step in healing before we can even look at those emotional love connections that we really want with others. And I know that so many of us struggle with relationships, and perhaps that's you right now. Perhaps you've been recently divorced, or you're going through a breakup, or your partner's had an affair, or you're struggling with your mother or your father, or perhaps your children, or maybe it's a work colleague who's let you down really badly, or a lifelong friend has deserted you, or perhaps you really want to take your marriage to a deeper level. Well, this is where we come in, because we're going to really help you heal those wounds Love yourself so that you can really make those emotional connections once again. Well, I have an amazing relationship business that I absolutely love. And I help individuals and couples all over the world. And now it's time for me to give other experts a chance to share their expertise. And this is where the show is going to be of really great value for you. As I'm going to be introducing amazing coaches, therapists, motivators and public speakers to share with you their expertise and knowledge. And you're going to learn so much. Because you know, life really is all about relationships. The better the connection, the better the quality of life. Right, without any further ado, let me introduce my wonderful guest today, my Ola Woods. Good morning, good afternoon, Myola, because I know it's uh, it's morning here for me, but it's not for you, is it? No, thank you, Louise. That was a beautiful introduction and a beautiful insights to, I just love what you're bringing to the world with changing the relationships with ourselves, with, our, with everyone around us that is just creating a different planet. Thank you for having me on your show. I'm so excited to be here. And thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm very excited because I know you have an amazing message um, that, you know, really everyone, you know, really needs to listen to my Yola. I know I'm extremely excited to uh, to dive in. So my Ola Woods is the erotic coach. And my Ola is going to be talking to us today about the secrets that keep our relationships alive and thriving. And how developing our first relationship will really invigorate our partners relating to how we can maintain, build and love ourselves in order to have the best partnered relationship. And we're going to be discussing the importance of owning our own emotions, the curiosity, intimacy and well-being. How turning up as a whole being is a different paradigm of relating. Okay, are you ready? But actually, before we dive in there, I just want to say a little bit about Myola. I'm just going to give a, a really short little background here because I know we're, we, we can't wait to get into this stuff. But Myola is an author. She's a certified sexological body worker. Wow, even that is um, 
sexological body worker. I can't wait to find out what that really is, Myola. And a somatic sex educator with extensive experience in energetics, body work and education. Wow, you are a very well educated and informative woman. Myola is a pioneer with courage who bravely speaks about the things that make most of us feel uncomfortable. And she specialises in teaching individuals and couples the art of connection, creating and cultivating the choice of arousal to deepen that intimacy, sensation and pleasure, even if it's been for a very long time. And as a sexual being, mother of four teenagers and pleasure enthusiast, Myola appreciates the time constraints daily and social pressures that can play havoc on our erotic lives. Myola teaches ways to explore and enhance your love making in everyday life, using techniques and practices that you can turn you and your life on. Take your intimate life from ordinary to extraordinary and have the orgasms you read and dreamed about because you deserve them. Right, I am seriously going to shut up now. <laughs> going to dive in here, my Ola, because there's a lot of stuff out there. People are going to go, whoa, I need to know more about this because I think, I, I don't think there's anyone here. I mean, people can uh, please question me if I'm wrong, who can't, you know, we can't improve, you know, the intimacy um, with ourselves and with our sex lives. I, I, I think we can all learn. Um, and it's a continual growth, isn't it, my owner? I think that's my, I suppose, my experience. And, every, you know, there are times when I think, you know, because have it, when the reason I'm here is because my life wasn't so groovy and I didn't have the intimacy and the depth that I wanted. And, you know, I can remember being somewhere with a friend of mine we were out on it and I said I I want to see the depths of somebody's soul I want to you know I suppose and I I realized in that moment she was having a bit of a giggle and we were with a couple of other friends I think they turned away they were so you know frightened to that even at the statement but I also realized if I wanted to see the depths of somebody else's soul I had to see the depths of my own first so I you know, went on a journey to discover how to do that and how would I, you know, what were the depths and what was I wanting to discover and what was I wanting to have with myself and therefore, you know, externally as well. And I always think, yes, every now and then I catch myself and I think, this is too much or there's there's too much and I take a breath and I go, how much more could there be? And I allow, I really now consciously allow more, goodness, more sensations, more more aliveness in every part of my life. What I what I have found is that when I move that from my sexuality and my intimacy and my relationships, it changed every single part of my life. Absolutely. There is nothing, no stone it left unturned. Wow. Wow, that's that's um, that's that's incredible, isn't it? That, that is incredible, and I, I can so relate to that because until we have really discovered our true selves, we can't dis- you know we can't go to that depth with anyone else. We can't make you know we can't create what we want with other people. So I'm I'm so aligned with you, Myola, um, in in the respect that it does start with being totally authentic with us, doesn't it? Yes. Yes, and often, you know, what I hear, and, you know, I would have been scared as well that, you know, intimacy was something somebody else needed to bring to me. And I see with my clients, both, you know, with individuals and partners, it's very easy for us to move into, well, it's them. It's, it's, it's there, you know, if they were just more open, if they were just, and as we, as we delve into, well, what would it be like if I was more open and what would it be like What have I got hidden that I don't want to see and that I don't want to reveal and why don't I want to reveal it? There's always a place where we look at our own vulnerability and we look at our own, those places that are uncomfortable. They're they're, they're nearly like it gives us nearly nervousness, you know, even thinking about looking at them. When we want to speak about them to somebody else, when we want to unpack them and reveal them, there's a often that takes us to a new level 
in ourselves and with our partners, it's very difficult to be really close to ourselves and to someone else when we're trying to keep, you know, all the balloons under the water. I don't know if that analogy works on radio, but, you know, for your listeners, you know, um, gonna, if you can imagine, you know, having, you know, blown up balloons uh, as our things that we've got hidden or the things we don't want to talk about or, you know, those parts of us, our angry parts or our jealous parts or our, un, you know, those parts that we want to keep secret, uh, when we're, okay, if you imagine them as balloons and we're trying to keep them under the water, that takes a lot of effort to do that. And so while we're efforting in our keeping our balloons and trying to look like we're cool, calm and collected, uh, as soon as something's not right, all of those balloons come up and, they, and they're out of the water and they're everywhere. Often that does not come out as a – that's more of like, an, I suppose, an explosion or, a, you know, everything's out on the table at once rather than us choosing, us being really conscious about well, what is – how could I do this and how could I look at this and how could I bring my emotional self and my vulnerable self and my and my love and my connection, you know, how can I bring my deep connection to with myself for me and then how can I bring that to someone else? I love that balloon analogy. I just love that because I can just see those all popping to the surface at the most inappropriate <laughs> of times and they all come at once. Yes. And as you say, yes. you have this most enormous you know it could be a row or something and it's just ridiculous you know it's over a cup of coffee that's been spilt and, and all of a yeah. sudden this all this yeah. stuff comes up and I can just yeah. that visual of those balloons coming up um yeah I love it I love it so we really need to be able to face all of that you know all of those parts of us that we don't like we don't you know we, we're, we're sort of hiding from because then they don't become a fear do they no and I think you know as more of you know, in my intimate life, but the more public I've become as well, I've had to have a look at what is it that I don't want to talk about or what is it that I'm afraid someone's going to say to me mm. and and work on and keep and keep delving into that as well. Otherwise, otherwise I'm not going to talk about things that are important to people. I'm going to hide them away and people can feel. Uh, people can feel it when we're hiding something. It's not necessarily we're hiding it because... Um, you know, we want to keep it a secret from them generally. Usually it's we're hiding it because we're maybe a little bit embarrassed or we're nervous or we don't know how to, we don't know what words to use or we think it's going to come out all funny. And for me, some of that is address, is saying that up front, you know, actually saying, look, I've got something to talk about and or I've got something I want to show you or I've got something I want to, I don't know how it's going to come out and the words, it's quite raw for me, so I just need you to listen for a little bit and I'm not sure, I could cry, I might get angry, I'm not sure how it's going to go, but I need you to kind of sit and listen to me for a little while and then we can kind of talk about how it is for us. And I think when we frame something to someone about what, you know, what we need and what's coming, the words then are not so, we give ourselves permission to be a bit, glitchy or a bit clunky or a bit, like my, you know, it's particularly if we're very uh, articulate and very communicative in the rest of our lives, sometimes when we hit these points, we don't always have the most eloquent words come out. Uh, I know, I can see from that that you're, make, you know, you're actually working on your, you know, you're learning from yourself whilst promoting your business, you know, by helping others. So so there's, there's a lot of growth there. I can, I can really feel that, Myola. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, I think we have growth in all areas, and I do. I like to do things that keep me a little bit uncomfortable as well, because my clients all come to me and they share very uncomfortable things and very, uh, you know, heart, very things that are very close to their heart. So I like to remind myself <laughs> how that is to to be like that and live like that, so that I'm. Living, you know, living the way that I you know, want to live, rather than just preaching or you know, do as I say and not as I do. Those yeah. from those pe- from those parent paradigms, you know. Uh, so you can really make some strong connections there. Um, for, I, I can really mm. feel that you know you can really because I think connections about everything, and especially um, you know, in, in your line of business, you've got to be able to connect with that client, or then they're just not going to be able to share those vulnerabilities. So I, I think that's. That's a wonderful way of um, connecting 
you know, with a client at such a deep level. And then we can make those 